Hello guys and welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program 2 video and in today's video we are back to the Kerbal Space Program 2 Let's Play Exploration Mode. So in today's video we will be doing some uh, missions. So as you can see we have the primary and secondary missions. But in this video I decided to do the three secondary missions because the primary mission is going to the Mun and we already did that in last episode. So I didn't want to repeat myself, so in this video we will be uh, getting an eccentric orbit of Kerbin. We will be leaving Kerbin's SOI and we will be getting a probe and everything into orbit. And next episode we will be doing the Mun mission, which is we need to go to a mysterious place on the Mun. But yeah, so here we are now in the VAB. Well, let's just wait for it to load. Yeah, here we are in the VAB, and let's now start our c the construction. So, I have a uh, capsule with a small probe core on the top, with a parachute on top. So yeah, just remember, we will need a probe core. We will also need well, we need an our engine, and we're gonna need some solar panels. So I did decided to add two small solar panels, and I added a relay dish right there. A relay antenna. It's not really a dish yet. And there we go. And also one thing I forgot to add on the top stage. I forgot to add a science junior. So don't forget to add the science junior. I'll be adding it later on. But yeah, this rocket, the only goal of this rocket is to get up out of Kerbin's SOI. And why? I don't know. So there's something wrong with the recording. But yeah, the only goal is simply just leaving Kerbin's SOI. It's that easy. Leaving Kerbin's SOI is something pretty simple, but I'll talk about it later on. And there we go, I have now added my Science Junior. So yeah, now I'm going to take a sip of my water. Th this rocket is very simple. I just wanted to say, this mission might as well even be easier than the Mun mission. Because we don't need to land on any planet or moon. It, although we get less science, it's... There's nothing complex about the mission. And now I'm adding some fins. Because I learned from uh, last episode that... Because uh, I forgot to add some fins. I realized adding fins was really important. And now I'm recoloring the entire vessel. And... Oops. There we go. Recolored everything. And that's pretty nice. And the last thing is adding some uh, launch clamps. To keep everything nice and stable on the launch pad. And we can now launch, I guess. I'm just fixing the staging, because that's very important. And now... Th f 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have... Liftoff! And, uh, yeah, the, the ship kind of just crashed down. But it's okay. Also, one more thing about the SRBs is you're going to need to uh, change the thrust limiter of those SRBs to 70%. Just remember that when you're doing your mission. 70%. It doesn't have to be full. So yeah, now I'm doing my regular gravity term, a turn, aiming for uh, 45 degrees by 10,000 meters. I've talked enough about getting to orbit and about gravity turns, so I feel like... If you really want an in-depth about the gravity turn and everything, I've made a full-on tutorial about how to get to orbit. So at this point, I don't want to like dilly-dally about like the methodology of getting to orbit and the gravity turn and everything. Because you... At this point, we, we've got quite far into the series. So by now, you should be able to do this by yourself, getting to orbit. Not the entire mission, but just getting to orbit, you should be able to do yourself without the need for a tutorial. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Because in the future, some missions will get pretty difficult. But yeah, now I'm just trying to aim for 45 degrees. As you can see, this is a bad example because I kind of messed up my gravity turn. And I went too shallow a little bit too early, so I had difficulties. But see, see, this, this is not a tutorial. It's a walkthrough because it's not even perfect. But yeah, the fuel is starting to run low. We still, we still got a... A decent amount of fuel but it's running low and now we can just deploy our lower stage there we go kind of a wobbly rocket yeah 
it's more about the flying itself it's an issue on the on my flying i'm not ah uh, to be quite honest i kind of rushed this mission this morning because i wanted everything to be done but yeah now we're just aiming to start pointing more and more flat and just like once we reach about 50 minutes to a minute away from apoapsis we can start pointing pro grade and i'm aiming for uh, an apoapsis of about a hundred kilometers yeah 100 kilometers is correct because i want to have a nice it's a nice round number so yeah now i'm just waiting for that to happen it's taking a little bit of a while but it should it's not taking too long so yeah that should be okay um it's taking a while i'm just waiting but yeah just burn your engines and there we go we have a nice and high apoapsis so now the next thing I want to do, I tried to get to the mission control, but then I realized it was going to destroy my ship. So I, 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 I gave up on that. But yeah, now I'm going to make a maneuver node circularization burn. And I decided to aim a little bit more because one of the goals is to get a, an orbit, an elliptical curve in orbit between with a periapsis between 70 and 100 kilometers and an apoapsis. Did I get this one? Yeah, and an apoapsis above 300 kilometers. So I decided to have an apoapsis of 1,000 kilometers in the orbit. So yeah, that meant uh, the, it's a much bigger circularization burn. So yeah, we, we're aiming for a nice and uh, elliptical orbit. And now I'm just going to wait till I reach the maneuver node. And there we go. Once again, I'm not I'm not talking a lot about maneuver nodes because once again, by this point, you should be able to plot maneuver nodes on your own without that the need of a tutorial. And there we go. We've completed two of the three tasks, which is very good. The last task we'll be doing later on. And there we go. That's pretty good. Now I'm doing a second maneuver node. And this time, this maneuver node, we're going to be pulling on retrograde, retrograde, prograde, until, see how the maneuver node lines then, uh, see how I get the blue circle? Yeah, basically what I'm aiming to do is get in an orbit so elliptical that it leaves Earth's SO, Earth? Kerbin's SOI. Yeah, I've, I've slowed it down back to real time so you guys can get the gist of it. But it's pretty simple. Now, in, in retrospect, you could definitely do it in one burn. But I did it in two burns, first of all, to maximize efficiency. Because the O-Birth effect states that a prograde and retrograde burns are more efficient when you're nearest to your periapsis. The periapsis is always the point of any orbit where you're traveling the fastest. So yeah, if you've got more velocity, then your prograde and retrograde burns will be more efficient. This is what the O-Birth effect states. A little bit of physics on orbital mechanics. How interesting. Now we're doing our burn. So in the meantime, I will take a nice sip of my water. ASMR. ASMR. For those who are interested, it's ASMR. Here I'm drinking a sip of my water. Pretty good. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll end this ASMR session because it's not going very well. And now I'm just waiting for the burn to end, and there we go. Our orbit is very elliptical. It's leaving Kerbin's SOI, sphere of influence. And now I'm just gonna, um, I'm basically just gonna, pretty simple, just time warp until I leave Kerbin's SOI, and then I'll do all of the science and everything. So I'm, I'm just waiting, it's taking quite a while, it's taking quite a while, but I'm nearly there. Okay, it's taking a very long time. And, and, there we, there we, there we, there we, there we, there we still aren't outside of Kerbin's SOI, we, we, there, oh no, I'm just waiting in uh, anticipation. Because I want to end this commentary. And there we go. We have left Kerbin's SOI. Which means we uh, finished our... We completed our very last task. Of the three tasks. And we also got some extra science points. How cool. 
So now I want to talk a little bit about the details of getting back to Kerbin because it's a little bit more tricky. So what you want to do is first of all set target of Kerbin. Then you want to point a target. You want to point towards the target which is Kerbin. And then just burn target until you you get an interception with Kerbin. Yeah, it's that easy. Just burn a little bit until you get you, until your Kerbin periapsis appears. And there we go. And now I'm aiming for a Kerbin periapsis of about 30 kilometers. So we've got nice and safe re-entry, I should say. But there we go. That's that. It's that's it. It's not very difficult. So yeah, this this is probably one of the easiest missions so far. It might even be easier than Mun Interception, because here there's no need to do any kind of odd orbit. It it's a really easy mission. So yeah, and now I'm just gonna do a little bit of screenshot shotting. I'm now fishing for thumbnails, so enjoy that. Uh, enjoy having a little bit of insight on how I take my thumbnails for each video. So yeah, I kind of like I like whenever I like I like finding a uh, fishing for thumbnails. I like turning on the engine and then just pausing so I get a nice shot of the engine plumes. But yeah, and now I decided to point prograde because I messed up my orbit because of that so let me just fix everything but yeah and you can see those big circles to be quite honest they're kind of eyesores I wish it I think I'm really happy about those circles in Kerbal Space Ground too because they're indicators of like SOI in in inciting like getting in inside and outside of an SOI but it looks really ugly like, not necessarily ugly, but they're way too, like, gigantic. Like, they're very massive. So maybe make them a little smaller or a little bit more, like, not that eyesore-esque. But, yeah. Let me take a sip of my water again. And, and now I'm just time-lapsing. Uh, I'm just... I'm just time warping down till I reach Kerbin and I'm at the same time fishing for thumbnails. Yeah, that's my duty, fishing for thumbnails. So yeah, there's not really that much more to this video, I guess. We're approaching Kerbin. Look at Kerb. Kerbin is actually really pretty in uh, Kerbal Space Program 2. Like in Kerbal Space Program 1, there were no clouds and it was so ugly. Now we do have clouds, so it's nice and pretty. There we go, another cool thumbnail. I don't think this one will make it. I don't know, see, it kind of looks a little bit odd. Yeah, thumbnail fishing is pretty hard because you need to really find those like good angles. But there we go. I'm fixing my orbit again. Ooh, this looks like a pretty good place. Yeah, definitely. I think this will definitely make it to the actual thumbnail. But yeah, I made my. For those who didn't know, I make my thumbnails in Procreate. Uh, I would love to do it in Photoshop, but I'm too lazy, so I do it in Procreate. I don't have Photoshop. I know I'm editing with Premiere, but I'm. You know what? I'm not gonna disclose everything. But yeah, I make my thumbnails in Procreate on my iPad, because I feel, I, I'm very like. I'm very, um, how do I say it, very able with my, I feel more um, used to um, like drawing and everything with like a pencil rather than a mouse and everything. So I prefer editing with like my Apple Pen on my iPad and just like doing everything with like the beauty of my fingers and everything rather than my mouse and keyboard. Because yeah, I prefer it like that. But yeah, we're now approaching, we're gonna have flash back. We're gonna have splashdown very soon. There we go. We have splashdown. We can recover, and we go back to the mission control to submit each of our missions. And we got a bunch of cool science. There we go. We've we've completed all three of the secondary missions. So next episode we will be doing the um, primary mission, which is um, going to this uh, thing on the moon. So now I'm gonna be unlocking a couple nodes on the science tech tree. So I'm. First of all, unlocking atmospheric uh, science, and then I'm unlocking precision aerodynamics. I'm unlocking atmospheric science specifically because you get the air sniffer, which means I can get more science. 
And I chose aerodynamic, precision aerodynamics, because you get the new nose cones, which I think uh, are better than those old ones. So yeah, it's, it, that's really it. You can really go with anything you want, but I, I chose the... I think I would always recommend you go with atmospheric science, because those... The, the, the air sniffer means a lot of extra science points. So yeah, we're going to make good use of those in next episode. But yeah, I guess this concludes. It's, it's a little bit more of a shorter, less interesting video, but it's still something interesting. So yeah, on the left hand side is a video for you. On the right hand side is playlist. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.